Hello and welcome. My name is Dan. Wait, are we calling this Hoot? <coughs> Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Hoot. My name is Dan, and I am one half of Night Owl Games. The other half is carrying behind the camera right now. Today we're going to be looking at two different games and analyzing what makes them good and what makes them bad. We're going to be uh, citing one particular text, James Paul G's Good Learning Principles in Video Games. The concepts that we'll be discussing in today's video are co-design and customization. According to G, a player should not only be able and encouraged to try new styles of play, but also feel like an active agent, not just passive uh, recipients of this medium. Take, for example, Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain. MGS5 takes G's concept of customization to a whole new level. The game actively adapts to the player's choices and subtly forces the character to change their play style throughout the game. Like using a sniper to complete missions, the enemy now has more helmets. Like to sneak around at night? Guess who has flashlights now? The guards are adaptive and respond to the way that you play. Why stop there though? You the player have complete control over almost every other aspect in the game. You can complete a mission without ever killing anybody or run in guns a blazing. Want a water gun and grenade launcher in the same loadout? Knock yourself out. Don't really want to take on the main mission? Go disarm some mines in Africa. All of these systems are directly controlled by the player, whether they know it or not, and make the player feel like they have, at least in some way, affected the world of the game. Transition! <laughs> now let's look at the other side of the coin. Bioshock Infinite, a game that was and is still praised often, in my opinion, for the wrong reasons. Infinite, despite its gorgeous exterior and rich narrative, suffers from a near complete lack of player customization. Coming from a series that very overtly references the buzzword of any aspiring games journalist, player agency. A man chooses, a slave obeys. While the game seems to offer you a literal wheel of choices, your choices are really... There's possession, a stun, a stun, a shield, a damage dealing stun, a charge, a stun, and a push. And even after you decide which vigor to use, you're limited to two guns, which more often than not were chosen for you based on the point of the game that you're at. The weapon upgrades are essentially arbitrary. The gear upgrades are rarely better than just wearing nothing. The level of exploration is near non-existent, and the side quests don't impact the world aside from giving you a few extra silver dollars and occasionally a worthless piece of gear. While the player can choose the way that they tackle the problem, all of these stripped down mechanics never let the player feel like what they're doing is actually affecting the world that they're in ultimately failing to create an effective and engaging experience for most players. TRANSITION! Thanks for watching our video, and be sure to subscribe for more. If you'd like to check out our playthrough of Metal Gear Solid V, be sure to click right here. <laughs>